In this walkthrough, we'll cover the steps needed to set up an indoor propagation analysis project in Wireless Insight. We'll start by importing an image of the floor plan to be built in the project. To do this, go to Project, Open, Image, and select the image file that you'd like to use. This will open the Image Properties window. Here, you can enter a short description and choose a coordinate system. For this example, I'll be using Cartesian coordinates. From there, you can specify an offset for the top left corner to adjust the position of the image in the project and a pixel spacing for the X and Y dimensions. The offset can help when trying to align the floor plan to a grid in the project, and the pixel spacings tell Wireless Insight how to scale the image to the appropriate size. To calculate the pixel spacings, you must know the real-world measurements for a portion of the area represented in your floor plan image, and you must know the pixel dimensions of that image. In this example, I know that this area is 90 meters. Using an image editing program, I measured this area and found it to be 5,175 pixels wide. To calculate the pixel spacing, you take your known measurement, in this case 90 meters, divided by the number of pixels in that measurement, which is 5,175 pixels. So for this example, the X dimension pixel spacing is 0.017391. This floor plan does not show a measurement in the Y dimension, so I will assume the pixel spacing to be symmetrical, though this is not always the case. It is important to note that currently, the Y pixel spacing must be entered as a negative value to ensure proper orientation of the image. There is also an option to crop the imported image by specifying minimum and maximum pixel values in the X and Y dimensions. However, for this example, I will not be cropping the image. Now that the image is loaded, we can use the measure tool to verify that it is the correct size. In future versions of Wireless Insight, the workflow for importing images will be streamlined to make this process more simple. Now we will build the floor plan geometry. To begin, go to Project, New, Feature, and select Floor Plan. You can specify a base and top height for the floor plan, but I will leave them as default for now. The Floor Plan Editor window is where the floor plan itself will be constructed. There is an adjustable grid to help with the alignment. For this example, I'm going to set the grid spacing to 0.1 meters for a higher level of detail. I'm also going to set the Snap To setting to grid lines so that the mouse cursor stays aligned with the grid. There are also buttons here to modify the materials that will be applied to the different elements of the floor plan, but I will leave them as default for now. To begin building the floor plan, right click and select New Walls. Now, left clicking in the grid will create lines that represent walls. When finished, right-click to exit wall creation mode. This process can be repeated to add additional walls. Once the walls are in place, you can create a floor. Right-click and select New Floor. Just like with walls, click along the outline of the floor that you would like to create. And right-click when done. Ceilings can also be made in a similar way by right-clicking and selecting New Ceiling, but I will not be doing that yet. After the floor is finished, the final two elements are doors and windows. 
Like the other elements, these are created by selecting New, Door, or Window, respectively. The Floor Plan Editor prompts you for a width of each door or window you create. Now, I'll click OK and take a look at my progress. To continue editing the floor plan, go to the Features tab on the main window, right-click on the floor plan, and select Edit. This will reopen the floor plan editor. Now that the floor plan layout is built, you can adjust its final height by going to the Features tab of the main window, right clicking on the floor plan, and selecting Change Height. I'm going to change the total height to 2.7 meters. With the ground floor finished, you can create the second floor by duplicating the ground floor and translating it up in the Z direction. On the Features tab of the main window, right-click on the floor plan and select Duplicate. You will be prompted to enter any desired translations, which is where the adjustment in the Z direction will be made. Here, I will enter 2.7 meters to align it with the top of the ground floor. In this case, the floor of the duplicated floor plan will act as the ceiling for the ground floor, which is why I did not create it earlier. Now that both floors are in place, I can create the ceiling on the second floor to complete the building. With the floor plan completed, now is a good time to change or replace any desired materials that are assigned to it. On the Materials tab of the main window, you will see a list of materials that are currently assigned to both floors of the building. For this example, I will be running the simulation at 2.4 GHz, so I want to replace the main building materials with frequency-specific versions of them from the included materials database, which can be seen in the lower portion of the Materials tab. The materials database can be expanded to include more material definitions from different locations. This can be done by right-clicking in the database, selecting Database Properties, and clicking Add. Select the desired materials directory, and click OK. Now the materials included in the second database location will appear in the list. To start, I'll replace the layered drywall on the ground floor. I'm going to find the ITU layered drywall for 2.4 GHz, right click, and select Add to Feature. When prompted, select the feature to which the material will be assigned, in this case the ground floor, and click OK. You'll now see the material added to the list of materials used on the ground floor. However, it is marked as inactive. To activate the material, I will replace the currently active standard drywall material by right-clicking it, selecting Replace, and choosing the newly added drywall material from the list. 
When replacing materials, you are also able to select materials directly from the database, which will automatically add them to the appropriate feature and set them to be active. The free space material used in the floor plans is used to represent the open doorways. In this example, I want to replace this with a frequency-specific wood material to simulate the doors being closed. Once this process is completed, I'll repeat it for the second floor. Next, I'll add the waveform that will be used for the simulation. To do this, right-click in the main window and select New Waveform. Choose Sinusoid from the drop-down menu and click OK. On the Waveform Properties window, you can enter a short description and adjust the frequency. This simulation will be run at 2.4 GHz, so I'll enter that frequency now. Once the waveform has been created, it can be seen on the Waveforms tab of the main window. Now I'll add an antenna. In this example, I'm using a simple isotropic pattern. To add it to the project, right-click in the main window and select New Antenna. Select Isotropic from the drop-down menu and click OK. The vertical bar on the right side of the Antenna Properties window will expand when clicked to show the rendered antenna pattern. Wireless Insight also supports a user-defined file format for defining custom antenna patterns. To demonstrate this, I'll create a new antenna, select User Defined from the drop-down menu, and select the UAN file I want to import. Now it's time to place the transmitters and receivers in the scene. For this example, I'll be using several transceiver points with the intent of measuring the communication between them. Start by right-clicking and selecting New Transceiver Set Points, which allows for individual transceiver points to be placed. Other set types create a series of regularly spaced points, such as a route through a scene, or a grid in the XY plane to show signal coverage of an area. When in the editing mode, left click to place points and right click to finish. When the transceiver properties window appears, you can enter a short description and ensure that the correct antenna and waveform have been assigned to the transmitter and receiver portions of the transceiver by clicking their respective buttons. Next, I want to change the transceiver's height to be closer to the ceiling. To do this, click Layout Properties, click Edit Control Points, and double-click on the point dimensions in the table. Here, I'll change the z-value to 2.6 meters, just below the 2.7 meter ceiling. Transceiver points are represented as blue cubes in the project view. Transmitters show up as green, and receivers are red. Now that the first transceiver is in place, I'll repeat the process to position the rest of them.
The final step is to define and run the simulation itself using a boundary volume called a study area. Right click and select New, Study Area. When prompted, choose Fit to Features as the boundary method, which will automatically set the boundaries of the study area to contain all of the features in the project. When the study area properties window appears, you can enter a short description and select the desired propagation model from the drop down menu. For this example, I'm using X3D. Next, uncheck the default checkboxes and enter the desired number of reflections from surfaces, transmissions through walls, and diffractions from edges and corners. These values inform the ray tracer about how many physical interactions we want our propagation paths to have with the geometry. In this example, I'll be running with six reflections, four transmissions, and one diffraction. Next, click the Output Requests button and select the desired forms of output from the list. For this example, I'll be adding complex impulse response, direction of arrival and departure, and time of arrival. Once the study area has been defined, run the simulation by clicking the Run button on the main window and selecting New. The calculation log shows the progress of the simulation while it runs. Once the simulation has finished, the output can be accessed on the Output tab of the main window. The data is organized in an expanding tree ordered by Study Area, Result Type, and the Transmitter Receiver Channels. Here, I'll be looking at the propagation paths from the transmitting component of Transceiver 1 on the second floor to the receiving component of Transceiver 2 on the second floor. Right-click and select Load to load the data, and then right-click again and select View All Paths. The color bar along the bottom of the project view helps to visually discern the power of the rendered propagation paths. This concludes the Wireless Insight Indoor Propagation Analysis example. Thank you.